it's me again, Chocolate Geisha, back for another video. So thank you for tuning in. And today we have a requested video from one of my followers and I am happy to oblige. So if you're interested, then stay tuned. Today's video is going to be the differences between American schools and Japanese schools. Many of you already know that I am an English teacher on the JET program, the Japanese Exchange and Teaching Program, which allows me one year here in Japan teaching English to local Japanese students. Like I mentioned, my contract is for one year and I have been here for about nine months now. So I am nearing the end of my contract, only three months to go, and it's given me some time to reflect. I'm really thinking about, you know, all the good times, all the places I've learned, all the ways I've improved in my language and my understanding of the culture. And I really want to share my experience with you guys and the things that I've noticed that are very different from America and Japan. So let's get right into it. I have never taught English in America. I graduated from my university and I came straight to Japan. So this is my first real job. However, I have done the whole K through 12 process in America so I can give some input on there. All right, so let's get right into it. The first thing I noticed is uniformity. Uniformity, everything is the same. Everything is the same. What they eat, how they dress, what they do at certain times, where they can go, where they can't go during school. I would say middle and high school especially have uniforms that they wear every day. For elementary school, they're a little younger, so you don't really wear uniforms. However, wearing uniforms is extremely common. And back in America, no one really wears uniforms at a public school. However, both public and private, middle school and high schools, require you to wear uniforms. My students, every single day, eat the same thing. They eat the same thing. No one brings their lunch. No one brings a lunchbox. Everyone eats kyushoku, which is the school lunch. Um, I'm basically the only one in the school who doesn't eat the school lunch. Some schools have kitchens, so they prepare their kyushoku there, and some schools get their food from a kyushoku center that sends mass amounts of the same thing to your school. Naturally, I stand out, not just from my appearance, but from what I eat every day. And so students are always coming up to me trying to see what I'm eating because I'm the only one that's different because they value uniformity so much. Mini story time. I was eating lunch in one of the classrooms and one of the students wanted to eat more. He finished his lunch and he wanted to get seconds. However, the teacher went to the child and was like, you can't have any more, you're eating too much. And I was a little shocked. A child knows when they're hungry and they know when they're full. Um, I was kind of surprised. However, it makes a lot of sense because if you're given a certain amount of food, eating more food sets you apart from everyone else and that's not being uniform. You're standing out and you could potentially end up gaining weight, which is not something that's viewed very positively here. People strive to be similar in build as well. So in America, you bring your own lunch for the most part, right? Or you can get the school lunch, and if you're still hungry, you can go back for seconds, or you can go to a vending machine and buy more food. However, here in Japan, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> and that's exactly how it is. The second thing that I've noticed is that Japanese children have more responsibility. The responsibility of the students at the schools is so much more than it is at American schools. Here in Japan, there are no janitors. There are no janitors at the school. The students clean everything. So they eat lunch, after lunch is done, they go play. And after they've been playing, there is a certain amount of time, about 20-ish minutes, dedicated to soji. Soji is cleaning. So students, depending on what class you're in, you clean your classroom. You clean your classroom. You sweep the floors, you sweep the floors, you wipe off the chalkboard, you wipe the floors like that little, if you guys have seen Spirited Away, there's like this little scene where Chihiro is cleaning the floor with this kind of motion with her little booty in the air and she's got like her, her hands um, with a towel wiping down the floor. That's something they do every day. Um, they come to the teacher's room as well. There's students sweeping, coming in there. The students are very much a part of the cleaning process. And the place is clean. The place is clean and it stays clean, I'll tell you that. It stays clean because the students know that they have to clean later, so they're a lot more careful about keeping it tidy all the other times that they're not cleaning. And it's 
brilliant. It's brilliant actually. The students learn a lot of things about the proper ways to clean and the proper ways to get the job done. And they're very efficient at it as well. As far as student duties go, all the students serve each other lunch. All the students serve each other lunch. There is no lunch lady either. There's no lunch lady. There's a rotation, a rotation of the duties that goes on every day. So one day you'll have certain students serving lunch, the next day you'll have certain students serving lunch. All of the students will go to the kitchen, they'll grab whatever food they need, they'll bring it to their classroom, they put on their masks, their aprons and their hats, and they serve each student food. They serve the right portions of the right food. They're responsible. They're really responsible about it. I'm like, wow, you guys, you guys are doing good. It's admirable to me. Also, continuing on with responsibility, a lot of the students go home by themselves. Yes, they walk home alone. Even the young first graders, five years old, six years old, it's very, very rare to have a parent come and pick up the child. It's also very rare for school buses to exist. A lot of the time there are no school buses. Students wear the little hats and they line up and depending on who's in your neighborhood, they walk together by themselves all the way home and all the way to school. Here, there's so much pressure on students to be like mini adults and to handle their business. We um, also, on the same topic, there is a little song that is played every day, every single day after school. Ika no o sushi. Ika no o sushi. It means squid sushi. Really cute, right? Ika no o sushi. However, that is not the meaning. Ika no o sushi is an acronym. It's an acronym that teaches kids how to be safe when going home. Ika means ikanai. Don't go. If you see someone on your way home that you don't know, don't go with them. That's that part. No stands for noranai. Don't ride. Don't ride in the car of anyone you don't know. Ika no o. O. <laughs> o stands for okinakoe. Okinakoe is big voice. Scream at the top of your lungs if someone is trying to force you to go with them that you don't know. It's crazy, right? I'm not done. I'm not even finished. Ika no o su. Su stands for suguni. Suguni. Suguni means fast, soon, quickly, with, with the quickness. Suguni nigete. Run away fast. Get out of there. Go home as fast as you can. Flee with your big voice, right? Screaming at the top of your lungs that someone is there. Ika no o su shi. Shi stands for shirase. Shirase means to inform, to tell, to let it all be known. Um, you tell a loved one or someone that you trust that someone was trying to get you at that given day. Ika no sushi. It's crazy. I heard the song at first and I couldn't really understand all of the verses that were in there. All I knew was Ika no o sushi and at the end it was like Taskete, which is like save me. So I was like what what is saving you have to do with sushi? But it's literally a song that they play as the students are walking home to teach them how to be safe, how to be safe and how to go home safely. It's so wild. But I mean, you've got to know. You got to know whether you're getting picked up by your parent or you're walking home by yourself, you have to know these things because you, you have to protect your own life. That's the kind of thing that they expect students to know. That's the level of responsibility that they expect out of their students. So another difference that I've noticed about Japanese schools compared to American schools is that teachers also have a lot more responsibilities. There's a lot more that goes into being a teacher than it does in America. Let me say this first. Japanese work culture is crazy. They expect a lot out of employees, whether you're working at the convenience store or like a top-notch company, they expect dedication. And the teachers follow through. The teachers do it with flying colors. The teachers eat with the students, they clean with the students, they meet before and after school with the students. After school, they're known to coach um, like clubs and things and they are, they are the coaches of after school activities. They also teach the students PE, so there is no PE teacher. The students do that as well. There is really no cooking teacher. The teachers do that as well. The teachers teach so many more things than they do in America. Also, in the teacher's room, 
the teachers stay long hours, long hours. There was this one day, there was this one day, I had forgotten my phone at school. So on my jog, a little jog that I was doing, I, I jogged back to school, it was like eight at night, and all the teachers were still there. I'm like, you guys don't go home. They don't go home. They're there all the time. They spend so much of their lives worrying about the kids and doing right by them and doing right by the school in general. This past Friday, we had a goodbye ceremony for the teachers that are leaving to move to other schools and everyone was in tears. Everyone was in tears because the teachers become like a surrogate family, like parental figures, maternal, paternal figures to these students. The students, even the students spend a lot of time at school and the teachers spend a lot of time at school. Most of their day, they're around each other. And so at the ceremony, everyone was in tears. And I even started tearing up because just seeing how important the teachers are to the students, it really rocked my socks. I was like, wow, these, they really care for each other. They do. They really do. Another difference that I've noticed is the quality of the food at lunch. The quality of the food at lunch is out of this world. It is a home cooked meal every single day. No hot dogs, no hamburgers, no pizza. Everyone eats nutritious, healthy, homemade food every day. There's always rice, bread, or some kind of pasta or noodles. There is always a vegetable dish, and then they drink it with milk. Milk, 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 <laughs> milk is, is not the healthiest beverage, but it beats soda in terms of sugar content, calorie content, and things like that. Sometimes during lunch, they'll have story time where the students will read a story to everyone, so everyone will hear their story. Um, they'll do like a little quiz, like a sensei quiz. They'll be like, this sensei likes this color. This sensei likes this food. This sensei um, has this kind of physical trait. Who are they? Um, another thing that they have is junkin' day. Junkin' day. Over the intercom, they'll go, kyushou, kyushou, junkin', junkin', boy! And then you pick either rock, paper or scissors, you get to see who won and who lost based on what you drew on your hand. And it's really, it's really cute. I actually really like it. I like uh, Junkin Day, especially with the lower level students, like the first graders and the second graders who are like really mature and they have like short attention spans anyway. They just do it and they're just like, you drew paper, I drew scissors, I win, ha ha ha. And I'm like, I'll get you next time, case gay. <laughs> um, but it's really, it's really cute. It's, it's a really nice thing that they do. Another difference is that students have two pairs of shoes. Two pairs of shoes. Um, and by two pairs of shoes, I mean they have indoor shoes and outdoor shoes. So in Japan, it's very common, it's not even very common, it's, it's the norm <laughs> to have indoor shoes and outdoor shoes because the outside is dirty and inside is clean. So I have two pairs of shoes as well. Students come from home, there's a, something called a genkan, which is like the entrance of the school. And all the students have little cubbies with their names on it, divided by class. And they put their outdoor shoes in, and they bring their indoor shoes, and they put on their indoor shoes, and they walk into the school. And that is something that they do every single day. You never wear your indoor shoes outside. You never wear your out outdoor shoes inside. Many elements here in Guma particularly, there's lots of sand, there's lots of wind, so there could be sand on your shoes, there's lots of rain, there could be mud on your shoes, and it'll just make everything dirtier. Especially since the students have to clean up everything anyway, it just makes a lot more sense to have two pairs of shoes. You leave the filth outside and you leave the clean inside and everyone is happy. The next difference that I've noticed between American schools and Japanese schools is the greetings. The greetings at the beginning of every single class. So. In America, you tend to kind of just jump into class. Maybe the teacher will say hello and then just start. Here in Japan, there's something called nichoku. Nichoku is like the greeting. And each day they pick someone to do the greeting. The greeting goes something like this. Nichoku-san, onegaishimasu. Greeter, please. Nani jikan mei no benkyo hajimemasu. Let's start blah 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 class. And then everyone goes, hi. Everyone says, yes. Next, they will say, kiritsu. Everyone will stand up out of their seat. Um, sometimes they'll say, chumok, which is attention. Everyone stands straight to honor the teacher. You give the teacher your eye contact, and then they go, bei, and then you bow. And then they say, onegaishimasu, chaksek, sit down. And they do that 
every single time. They say it in English too. They say it in English for me when I go and I teach them. They'll say, let's start English class. Yes, stand up please. Attention, bow. Please teach me, sit down please and then we'll start. And it never starts without the greeting. You have to properly open the class. I'm, to this day, I'm still very impressed that the students do that every day for every class, every class. Another thing I've noticed is that the teacher's room is not just for teachers. Um, if you're having a really rough day, crazy day, you just wanna break from the kids and you go to the teacher's room, don't go to the teacher's room because there are students in there all the time. Students are coming to meet with teachers to correct their work if they were absent. Also, there is like a huge wall of keys, a wall of keys for the science room, for the gym, and students have the responsibility of coming, the Nichoku, whoever is the guide for the day, comes and asks for the key takes the key, leaves, and then brings it back at the end of every class. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, then like it. And if you want to see more, then hit subscribe and become part of the YouTube fam. But thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.